I'm a big believer on introducing the keyboard really early. Video games, I'd like to throw them all in the ocean. So a nice old laptop that won't play the video games is just fine. Dr. Temple Grandin is 57 years old and autistic. In spite of her diagnosis, she has become an internationally renowned scientist and an activist on the humane treatment of animals. And we should not be raising a chicken that grows so fast that when he grows up, he's a cripple that can't barely walk. That is wrong. Temple is probably the most sought after speaker on the subjects of animal handling and autism. She has authored top selling books and hundreds of articles on both subjects. I get satisfaction in life by seeing real concrete accomplishments out in the field. And like for the first 25 years of my career, they literally were made out of concrete in many cases. Her unique personality has won her public acclaim and has pushed her into the spotlight on the subject of autism. I think Temple Grandin is one of the most, if not the most recognized person with autism in the entire world. Everyone pretty much knows Temple, Temple's name, Temple's um, work that she's done to change things. You don't know that your thinking is different until you start questioning and interviewing people about how you think. Her innate ability to think in pictures has given her many special talents, enabling her to grasp concepts that few may understand. I can run my mind like one of these virtual reality computer systems. I can draw a drawing for a piece of equipment and then run it in my mind. When I design things, I can take the pictures I make in my mind and I can make them into 3D motion video. I, as a mother of a child with autism, read Temple Grandin's book, Thinking in Pictures, very early on. To me, it gave me a lot of inspiration. Temple was first diagnosed in 1950, an era when the medical community knew very little about autism. Now my father didn't think I was going to, you know, do it, make it be anything and said I ought to be put in the institution. Grandin's mother recognized Temple's needs and possessed an intuitive sense of her daughter's potential. The key uh, that my mother found, uh, she could get through to me and she was playing Bach on the piano and I was humming the Bach. And then she realized that she could get through to me. Temple Grandin's mother had the insight to know that a child with autism would need engagement, would need turn-taking, would need communication back and forth. That all relies on the principles of applied behavior analysis. And then mother hired a nanny when I was three, and the nanny spent hours just playing turn-taking games with me and my sister, getting me constantly to interact, always trying to get me to do things. As a teenager on her aunt's farm, Temple was able to view farm life firsthand. She observed squeeze shoots that ranchers used to administer vaccinations to cattle. She noticed many cattle would relax in the squeezer and recognized that her reaction was similar to the cattle's. So I tried out the squeeze shoot and I found that that tended to help uh, calm me down too. Pressure is calming. This realization spurred a lifelong drive to help others with autism make the same connection. It is so important to get as much early and intensive therapy as possible. Today, autism is being diagnosed at an alarming rate. It is an epidemic that the Department of Education calls an urgent concern. Currently, there is no known cause of autism, and the broad spectrum of disorders is baffling. The thing is, autism disorder is a spectrum, going from very severely remaining nonverbal all the way up to you know, genius scientists. It's a spectrum from normal to abnormal. Temple's experiences with autism have unlocked doors and given hope to the growing number of parents, families, and individuals affected by the disorder. Well, I think the most important thing that I learned today is to develop strengths and to learn how people think um, and that all people, even if they seem unreachable, are reachable in some way. Temple also stresses the importance of balancing her autism with her dedication to her career. Autism will take over if I let it, but I'm not going to let that happen. You know, I shouldn't be a professional autistic. I want to be, I want to keep being a livestock person. And there's certain kinds of things that I can actually do better. And I can, there's certain things I can think very clearly on, and I, I like that. <laughs>